was just the morning for blues mm -hmm. around here. It is Friday, June, July, August, June 15th. July 15th. I got so many different my, months on my mind. I'm thinking about a really exciting thing coming up here, family, family get together in August, and of course, camp coming up in September, 60 day countdown to camp. I uh, just sent out a whole ton of information to uh, the people we're expecting at camp, and we have a couple of spots left actually five so if anybody else wants to join us we can get up to 35 people got 30 coming which is perfect but a few more if you want to join in a um, lot of exciting things going on on September 12th to the 16th so um, oh speaking of camp just a weird little sideline uh, I, I went back and took a look at the camp page internationalguitarcamp.com and realized that the video talking about it was quite old and it was talking about how we were postponing camp from the fall of 2020 to April of 2021, which we of course canceled too. Luckily, we squ squeaked one in last year in September of 21. Yes, and now we're coming up on September of 22. Months, years, they're all starting to get a little blurry with me. But i um, getting real excited about it, looking forward to seeing all my old campers and the, uh, the quite a good group of new campers coming in this year. Uh, okay. Enough about that. That was one thing that popped up this week. Why was I thinking about blues? Well, I'm, oh man, this is gonna... Um, okay, try to stay on track. I've got about seven, 17 or 18, maybe five or six things I want to talk about. Um, but one of them is uh, the requests that have come up lately. I saw a great one for a James Taylor tune, Mexico. And that made me think, then I listened back to Sweet Baby James. And every time I listen to that album, I hear stuff that I forgot how cool it was. Lo and behold, popped out at me. And um, now, of course, Steamroller, which is sort of similar to what I was just doing there. Let me give you a hint about what's happening in Steamroller. Enough about James Taylor. I may get to a James Taylor tune for next week because I have a pack, maybe two packs coming out of James Taylor stuff. We'll get back to packs in a minute. Um, Steamroller is essentially just a real simple 12-bar blues in E. There's my first line, E, A, E. Second line, two measures of A. The one kind of distinctive thing he does, he does a few other distinctive things in there that I'm not doing right now. Now, every little lick I played in there was really just out of an E blues scale, which meant using an E minor. An E minor pentatonic scale, which is the notes out of a G scale, notes 1, 2, 3, 5, and 6 of a G scale, but just in this position, with the addition of the flatted fifth of E, B flat. All right, there you have a blues scale. That wasn't today's tip. I had a different idea for a tip that I'll get to a little bit later. But just so if you're, ever, if you're wondering what the difference is, what a blues scale is. It's a minor pentatonic scale. There's a lot of flexibility in what you can do when you're playing blues, but a good starting point is blues in E. Use the E minor pentatonic scale, E, G, A, B, D. But add in the flatted fifth, E, G, A, B flat, B. D, E, G, A, B flat. That lick from uh, Man's Fate has that has a couple B flats in it. Okay, so Steamroller might be the James Taylor song that I'm getting to next week, but I'm also toying with Mexico. So working on on one of those tunes will be coming up soon. If I don't get distracted with everything else going on. Um, but, okay, that's it. We talked about blues. We talked about a blues scale. Talked about James Taylor, which I guess sort of leads me into the uh, some of the other requests that have been up there lately. I am totally taken with the Kieran Kane tune, I Can't Wait. And um, on the first listening to it, I thought, this is going to be a really easy lesson.
There it is. You saw the progression. I believe it's capoed. It's not in D. It's in F. So it's capoed at the third fret. But the first thing I heard was not this in the bass. I heard an octave lower in the bass, which meant it was in drop D tuning. Okay, fine. Simple progression. You just saw it. But it also has a steady alternating bass and a cool little melody picked out. Second listening, I hear a hammer on on a bass note from the second of the chord to the third of the chord. That means on a D chord hearing something like this. Nobody would do that on a D chord. And, cause all, and so, duh, there are two guitars. One is playing a D shape of chords at the third fret. Another is playing a C shape of the chords because that's where you get that hammer on. So what started off as a simple project, I can knock this out in a couple hours and have it up in a couple days, made me realize this would be a great lesson to talk about playing the same progression in different keys at diff capo to different spots so it works out the same. So then I watched a video of Kieran playing this from more recently with a second guitar player capoed at the ninth fret playing at G's. Now that meant it wasn't in the key of F anymore, it was in E. Okay, just a little um, background insight into sometimes what happens with me when I'm thinking about, oh, that's going to be a great lesson. Let's get on it. I was just talking to Nesh about this the other day, too, because same thing happened with uh, the Five Satins tune that I should mention. We did get one new lesson up this week, early in the week, um, a, a look at the doo-wop song, and the lesson went into how to play it in three, four, five different keys. Put it in a key that is good for your voice. I have a couple students who take music, oh, tangent, tangent alert. Take literally what it says to do about a song, uh, like, oh, this was done capoed at the sixth fret. So they think, okay, I gotta play capoed at the sixth fret. No, you have to put it in the key that fits your voice. If you can't sing it where, you know, Art Garfunkel sang Scarborough Fair, don't put it at the sixth fret. You know, James Taylor. Well, I think you've got a friend is, is uncapoed. But um, Fire and Rain, if you put it at the third, you're doing this. Put the capo on, truck. Well, if you don't sing as high as James, don't put the capo on. Do it open. Anyway. Okay. Sorry. Pet peeve alert. Um, you don't have to literally put the capo where it tells you to put it for the person that performed it. Uh, where was I going with that? I can't wait. Great. It, it, I will get to this lesson hopefully next week, and it'll be talking about playing it in three different capo at three different places in three different keys. But that's what I mean. It turned into a little more complicated project than I was hoping. What else have I been listening to? Um, I also like the recommendation of uh, Dan Fogelberg doing this. noodles around with a Spanish sounding progression anyway it just turns into kind of a cool starts off with an improv over a very Spanish-y sounding progression, A minor, D minors, G's, and E's, and then goes off into a little bit more structured form, which is kind of cool. So I still may get to that too. Okay, but that's not what I really want to talk about today. Well, I, I really want to get to the tip that is related to, uh, hopefully you watched last week's uh, update, where I was talking about a way to um, uh, find easily the notes in any given chord, any given triad. If we need an A flat minor, how you could know that A minor is A, C, E, because that's the natural chord that's in the key of C. Where's my piano? Um, and so to make it A flat minor, you just flat them all. But if it's A major, I'll get back to that. I got a couple other things I got to talk about first. Um, oh, this is actually going to be really short, because what, what else we did come up with a few this week is some cool packs. Um,
and I got we, we got backlogged on on packs, and I just didn't follow up, and all of a sudden realized there's a ton of these things I want to put together, and get them out because a lot of people really do like we, um, you know, just like picking up lessons in um, related sources. So, got a, a five pack of band tunes this week, a five pack of Carpenters tunes, and a five pack of Offspring tunes that. Mm. I hadn't really listened to those guys very much, but then as I was talking, putting this pack together, I thought I got to check these songs out, and really enjoyed um, an acoustic show that they were doing that had like three of them, three three guitar players sitting up there, and and run through some of these tunes. So I really want to thank thank Max, who I've been in touch with lately. Hope to get back on board soon uh, for putting together these these neat lessons on uh, you know. Mm -hmm. Nouveau punk. I guess they were part of a punk revival in the uh, in the late '80s, really, and early '90s. So, along with Rancid, Green Day, some of those types of bands. Um, a little bit off my radar, but boy, I I did get requests from a lot of uh, a lot of my students to to keep those kinds of guys on the on the radar. So, um, the other thing that has been sort of sitting by the wayside for way too long is fly on the wall lessons and so this week managed to get one of those together and now now i'm set up back again to have everything ready here for some of my regulars now many of my regular students are doing zoom lessons still some of them have moved a little further away so um yeah probably about half of the, half the lessons i do here each week are still still on zoom um but that has done a couple of cool things. It's opened the door for me to be able to have students that are a little further away, actually a lot further away, and um, uh, and see them a little bit more regularly and keeping everybody's health in in check, I guess. So um, Rob is one of our he was one of our first year campers last year, and he uh, started. He was really a beginning guitar player. He just really started playing a month or two before camp, and uh, by the end of camp, he was getting up on stage playing playing. Um, no expectations. Ran through a uh, the Rolling Stones tune, and then left inspired by Dave's and Kathy's and and Lynn's a few other songwriters who had been playing some of their own tunes and started working on writing his own song. And he came in last week and we we're working on his tune Windy Hill. So I hope you get a chance to check that out. Uh, let's see. Oh. I mentioned last week that uh, I caught a, a, a an Al Stewart Dave Nachmanoff show at the Mountain Winery back on July 2nd and that made me start thinking do I have all the Al Stewart songs anyway um, that I wanted to put lessons out on and I thought yes I do what's okay so coming up also this week a site is a, an Al Stewart pack Along with a few others, got got a few others in the. Uh, Realize that I have a lot of instrumental arrangements that I've done lately that have not ever shown up there. Okay, enough about packs. Let's get to the tip. I think I'm done. Okay, so my my tip of the week is really a continuation of last week's tip. Last week, so um, if you're if you're not real clear on that, go back and what I was talking about last week is. If you have a good, first you need a good grip on how to get from triads. We're talking about four triads. Diminished, minor, major, augmented. Listed in that order for some very important reason. From small to large, and um, they, you should be able to start with any one, a major chord, and know what you have to do to make it minor, augmented, or diminished. Or even starting with a diminished chord, what you'd have to do to make it major or augmented, how you alter the notes. So, once you're clear on that, then what I was really suggesting was make sure you know the seven natural triads, the ones that are only white keys on the piano, meaning the triads in the key of C. We, of course, have major chords on one, four, and five. That's C, F, and G. Minor chords on two, three, and six. That's D minor, E minor, and A minor and a diminished chord on seven, B diminished. Now, what all those chords have in common is they only have natural notes in them, meaning the A natural chord is minor because it's A, C, E. Well, if I need to change that, so I have that as my starting point for all A chords. Then I know that to make it major, I have to raise the third. To make it diminished, I have to lower the fifth. 
and to make it augmented, I have to raise the third first to make it major, then raise the fifth to make it augmented. So tiny extension of that is that makes it also really easy to have all seven natural notes, what, they, what notes you need in them as major chords. This is now going to be outside the key of C. So if you think about it doesn't affect our C chord, our F chord, or our G chord. Those are majors. But we had three minor ones, D minor, E minor, and A minor. That means that for those to be major, they have to have the middle note be in a black key. So D minor has to have F sharp in it. E minor, e, sorry, D major has to have F sharp in it. E major has to have G sharp in it, black key, right there in the middle between your white keys on the E's. An A major chord has to have two white keys and a black one in the middle, that would be the C sharp. Last one, the B chord has to have two black keys. So it's B and a D sharp and an F sharp. So in our natural major chords, we have three that are all white keys. We have three that have a sharp third, a black key on the third. And we have one B that has a black key on the, for the third and the fifth. Okay, enough. progression I heard in Todos Santos, the Dan Fogelberg request. that a little bit I guess. It goes to D minor 7 and the notes I can use to improvise around it are notes in the key of A minor. And it goes to the C major 7, same notes. But the interesting thing about the C major 7 is if I'm going to add a note on the second string, it's going to be an F, I'm just a half step above my third. But if I do the same thing on the B flat major 7, yeah, I can't do that. It has to be in B natural. So when I was when I was improvising over my B flat major seven chord and wanted to raise the third of the chord, it had to be raised a whole step to be in the key. So I used an open E. Try that again. Okay, so the D minor seven. Add a C and a G. C major seven. Add an A and an F. B flat major seven and E. E this time. And a little run out of the key of A minor. Back to E.
There you go. Toto Santos, sorta, just made up on kind of on the spot. But um, that was a very cool video, and obviously very old. Dan looked pretty young in that, and but it was it was cool to see. So uh, check that out. That was in the recommend a lesson uh, thing from earlier this month, from oh, a couple of weeks ago, I think. Now, so I think I have checked off everything on my list. I I I believe. I believe I can fly. See you next week.